Welcome to Physics 262 uh, pre-lecture tutorials. I'm Dr. Steve Brule. Today we're going to study parallel and series resistor circuits. <clears throat> First we'll show that current is the same for resistors in series and voltage is the same for resistors in parallel. We'll derive the formula for equivalent resistors in series and parallel. We'll study a complex circuit with both series and parallel components, and we'll witness a vivid demonstration of the difference between AC and DC current. And finally, we'll visit with Dr. Strangely McGinn and learn about his strangely compelling theory of quantum dreams. Well, first let's go to the PHET website and construct an electric circuit with light bulbs. And you can do this at the comfort of your own home and check your own circuits. Well, here we are at the PHET construction kit for AC and DC circuits, and we're going to construct a light bulb circuit with three light bulbs in series. So I'm just going to take a light bulb here, and I'm showing you this because you can use this. You could put resistors in this circuit, too. Um, we're not going to use one in ours today, but you can do that to test whatever um, circuit you might end up with. Okay, so now we have a battery. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to make a wire goes from, oh, here's my wire, goes over here, and I'll put another wire over here. I'm just trying to make it look like our picture in our lab. I mean our, come on, where's the wire? There it is. There. Now I'll take another wire and put it here. I'll get rid of that resistor that over there. Take another wire. Isn't this neat? It looks like a little kid's thing, but it actually would work for your homework <clears throat> assignment if you wanted to check to see. I don't have to. I'm just going to run it down to here. And see, now that we've got it going, the current is going. And which direction is the current moving? It's going at, uh, according to the... Um, the I believe that's the positive end so it's it's showing electron flow but there's somewhere in here where we can set it to show let's see if I put schematic no it doesn't do anything 10 ohms 10 ohms 9 volts there we are um, and there you go if I wanted to see a voltmeter I could have the voltmeter come out and I measure the volt what would the voltage be if I measured the volts between here and here Zero, because there's no voltage difference between any um, uh, a wire. It has constant potential. Over here, 6 volts, 9 volts. See how that works? It's neat. Okay, so here we are. We've got uh, a schematic diagram of the light bulb setup that we just set up on that PHET uh, website. And this is Kirchhoff, and Kirchhoff has laws, and one of his laws says that around any loop, the sum of voltages has to be zero. And that's really a simple idea. All it means is that if, let's say we, say we start here, and this is our ground, we go up 9 volts, well then we have to go back down 9 volts to get back to that point. That's Kirchhoff's loop rule. And we're going to go in, into that in more detail in our next lesson. But what that means in our case right now is that the voltage drop across here, here, and here has to sum to this voltage. <clears throat> and that's what I've just said right there. V battery is V1 plus V2 plus V3. Well, just applying Ohm's law, V equals IR for each circuit element. And notice how I keep these subscripts so I don't get confused what I'm talking about. Um, we know that since this is a series circuit, the current is the same in each element. So I, this is I1, 2, 3, and that's going to be the same as I1, I2, and I3. So I just substituted I1, 2, 3 for each one of those. Just uh, factoring that out. And then here is our equivalent resistance, which is one, R123. So we can replace these three resistors with a single resistor that has an equivalent resistance of the sum of those resistors. So that's how you do it when you've got series resistances. 
<clears throat> let's find the voltage drop across the first bulb. So here's the total resistance. I just summed them all up. That's R123. Um, we find I123 by taking B123 over R123. See how I keep those subscripts? And the thing that students always mess up here is they'll apply Ohm's Law, but then they'll put voltage across one element and the resistance of some other element. So don't you do that. All right. So we've got 9 volts across our total resistance of 30 ohms, which gives us 0.3 amps going through the circuit. Well, we know that the current, this 0.3 amps right here, is our total current, and it's the same as each element here, because any current that goes through here has to come through here, here, and here. <clears throat> so all th three of those are equal to 0.30 amps. So now we can start calculating voltages because we know the current and we know the resistance of each one of those elements. So V1 is I1 times R1. There is I1, which is the same as I123, of course, and uh, times its resistance, which was 10 ohms. So we get three volt, a 3 volt drop across that resistor. <clears throat> we can apply the same uh, um, procedure to the other two resistors, 0.3 amps times each one because they're all the same um, resistance so we have a total um, we're checking this that the voltage drops here have to equal this voltage rise and that's true 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9 okay now that we can test oh so now we're going to go into the real circuit and I just went ahead and did, did a, a screenshot of that and I put here's my voltmeter and remember with a voltmeter you put it in parallel with any element that you want so I put it in parallel with the first um, light bulb, and I got 3 volts. And there's the ammeter in series with the circuit, and it's reading 0.3 amps, just like we uh, calculated. And then I also measured, I just measured the voltage across this light bulb by putting my leads in parallel with it. And I can measure the voltage across both of these by putting my leads across both of them. And I get the sum of the two voltage drops, which is 6 volts. <clears throat> if we wanted to increase our voltage with batteries, we just add another battery in series. And we see that the combined voltage of those two batteries in series, they just add together and we get 18 volts. Well, let's look at a parallel circuit. How can we calculate how much current flows in a circuit of three parallel light bulbs? So here's a, a circuit just like we did before, but now the light bulbs are in parallel with a switch here and a battery, and there's no current flowing right now. There's no switch here. I just got it hooked up. But that's the schematic diagram for the light bulb situation. Well, Kirchhoff has another rule that says this is called the uh, node rule, that the current that goes into some node is equal to the current, the sum of all the currents coming out of the node. So here we have the total current going into this node, and then I3 is coming out, I2 is coming out of that, and I1. So then um, <clears throat> we can say I123 is equal to the sum of all those three currents. Seems reasonable. The battery, it's another way of saying that the battery is providing current for each one of those resistors that are in parallel. Okay, so now we just apply Ohm's law for each one of these. Uh, you know, V equals IR, so I equals V over R. So I just put, did that for each element, and I'm maintaining my uh, subscripts for each one. Now, with parallel, we know that if elements are in parallel like these are see how they're all touching on both sides I like to say they're all shaking hands with both hands these hands are touching these hands are touching these hands are touching these hands are touching so they're all in parallel so if, if these circuit elements are in parallel they all see the same voltage which is what I wrote right here so I can replace V1 V2 and V3 with V1 2 3 because it's the same number take that out and we end up with this equation so uh, the voltage which was uh, the total voltage which is 9 volts times 1 over all these things will should equal 2.7 amps so once we close this switch we'll get 2.7 amps but before we do that let's note that this equation right here is we had I equals V V times 1 over R, because that's Ohm's law. So that means that this quantity right here must be 1 over the total or the equivalent resistance of those three 
resistors in parallel. So that's our equation for resistors that are in parallel. All right. Well, we check our circuit. I close the switch. Sure enough, there's 2.7 amps just like we calculated. Um, and we can work out the current through every element if we wanted to know that. And we just apply Ohm's law for each element. So for this one, uh, I1 is V over R. That's just Ohm's law solved for I. And I'm, I'm keeping those subscripts, 9 over 10, so that's 9 tenths of an amp. Do the same thing for this one and for this one. They're all the same resistance, which makes it really easy. They're all 0.9 amps, but uh, you'll get ones that are harder. Okay, and uh, we can check that. The sum of these should equal this, and sure enough, they do, because 3 times 0.9 is 2.7. And there we go. Uh, okay, so we're going to uh, finish up here with a complex circuit. And <clears throat> we've got a switch here that can turn it off and on. And then here's another switch we're going to play around with in a minute um, after we do some calculations. But first, let's work this circuit out. So we see that these elements right here are in simple parallel because they're shaking hands on this side and shaking hands on this side. So I can, I can uh, summarize or make an equivalent resistance for those three resistors using the equation for parallel resistors. So there it is, 1 over, one over R1 plus 1 over R2. And a lot of people, especially engineering students, they like to say, uh, uh, like if you have two resistors, you can say it's R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. But that only works if you have two resistors. So if you have three resistors like this, then you're in trouble. And I always get students that use that equation for three or more resistors and they end up with the wrong answer. So don't do that. Just use the regular equation and you'll always be okay. Um, okay, so those are in parallel and I replaced this part of the circuit. Oh, also notice that I numbered all these so that I, I know what I'm talking about when I uh, do my diagram. So then I took this parallel component, reduced it to a single resistance, and then now I've redrawn the circuit with R234, and which is now in series with that guy. So we can see that it's in series. Let's see. That this this right here is in series with the equivalent capacity or the equivalent resistance of those because if you were going to walk through that door, you have to get through this door to get back. So these are in series with each other. But now I can reduce those two series elements into a single uh, element using the equation for series resistors. So I just sum those up, R1 plus R234, and that e equals uh, 13.33. So now I've gone through the circuit and reduced it to one single resistance <clears throat> by applying my rules. And once I've done that, I can find the total current. So I had the total resistance, I've got the total voltage, so I can find the total current by just taking that ratio and I get this for the total current that's going to come out of that battery. And I just checked it for you. I closed this switch and I get 0.67 amps in the uh, simulation and I got 0.67 amps there too. I guess the simulation doesn't give us as many significant figures, does it? Okay, well let's say that we're... Um, so we found the current through the whole circuit, but that's not maybe what we wanted to do. Maybe we want to know the voltage on that battery or that uh, light bulb. And that's the sort of thing that you'll have to solve in your quiz and on um, test. So then you have to go a little bit farther. So here we are. We have the current through each one of these elements. So now we can find the voltage on each one. So here's the voltage across 1, so I'm going to find the voltage on R1. It's going to be I1, R1. See how useful those subscripts are? So there's I1 is the same as the I total, which I know because it was in series. And then the resistance 1 was 10 ohms, because each one of those light bulbs was 10 ohms. So I get a 6.5 volt drop across this resistor. So I know now know what V1 is. Um, now let's find V2. Well, I just tested it. There it is. In the simulation, I put my meter in parallel with that light bulb, and sure enough. Okay, so now I can find V234 by just taking I234 times R234. 
Well, I234 is the same as I1, which is the same as the total because they're in series. And then there's the um, resistance of 234. So then that was 2.25 amp uh, volts across that resistor. And sure enough, 2.25 volts when I measure that. And uh, that voltage will be the same as any one of these voltages because they're all in parallel. And then if I wanted to find, say, I2, let's say that's what I wanted to find in the first place, I just take V2 over R2. Just apply Ohm's Law, keeping all those subscripts. See how you'd get confused if you didn't have subscripts? You'd just have all these V equals IR equations. You wouldn't know what you were talking about. Okay, so there is the, the voltage across 2 divided by the resistance, and then that gives the current through that guy. Let's see, and I went through and put an ammeter in series with each one of those light bulbs, and sure enough, each one is drawing 0.22 amps, just like we thought. Well, now let's have just a little bit more fun with this circuit. We've got two switches in here, and this was the switch that we closed before to, to turn the circuit on, but I have another switch in here. What if I close switch 1 with switch 2 open? That means that no current can flow through that switch. What do you think would happen? Why don't you press pause and come back? <clears throat> well, what would happen is if that um, switch is open, then there's no current that's going to flow through that whole part of the circuit. And we would just have two light bulbs in series with one another. This is a 9 volt uh, battery. This is uh, 10 ohms. This is 10 ohms. So each, since they're both 10 ohms, they will divide the voltage evenly and we'll end up with a four and a half volt drop across each one. And uh, let's see, that's what we get. Yeah, sure enough, there it is, four and a half volts. And then I also, uh, we me we're measuring the current that's going through this branch of the circuit. Excuse me. And there's no uh, current going through those two because that switch was open. Let's take a look at how current flows in an AC circuit. While we've got this uh, interesting simulation up, it'd be neat to see the current. Let's turn the voltage up. Now we're seeing the real glory of this demonstration. And this is what's happening in your light bulbs in your house because your house has AC current. And when the current goes one way, it lights up, then it lights up going the other way. But when it stops, the light bulbs then have no current for a brief instant and they turn off. We can't tell that because it happens so fast that our eyes don't notice it. Mm -hmm. We can increase the frequency of our uh, sloshing. Let's change the frequency. Right now it's half a hertz. Let's go up to one and a half hertz. I don't know if it's keeping up, is it? I guess it is. And finally, it's time now for our visit with Dr. Strangely McGinn to learn about his strangely compelling theory of quantum dreams. Good evening, Dr. Strangely McGinn. Um, what do we have for you today? Quantum dreams um, and how it can uh, move into teleportation. Oh, very interesting. So, as a human, as a human race, we, we're very good about averaging out the size of the things. So, Taking, taking the size of objects to try to um, measure the size of an animal. And we're, on average, we're almost exact. So we can take that same thinking and apply it to quantum dreams, stimulating people's thoughts with, and record their dreams, average them out, and we'd be able to find a quantum world that um, would make sense. And it's the only way that I could think of um, that would also relate to teleportation. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.